so many of our favorite hair products that are even claiming to heal and help our hair are actually extremely damaging and actually making your hair worse than if you use no product at all. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sylvia. I'm a hairdresser and I've been in the industry for over 15 years. And now that I am for the first time creating my own hairline in my deeper dive in the last couple of months, I just continue to be extremely surprised and let down that our industry, especially with these big name brands, very luxurious hair brands are still using these ingredients that are killing your hair. So let's just dive right in. So the four main things to look out for, even if you're not an expert, are bad alcohols in the hair. And I say bad because there are some types of alcohols that are in products that are there in very small amounts just to protect the longevity of the product. Now, are there better ingredients today that we can use instead of those alcohols? 100%. But if they are in smaller quantities, meaning they come in at the more so end of the list, it's not as big of a deal, but still something you really wanna look out for and want to avoid in your hair products. The other two have gotten a huge buzz in the industry and that's sulfates and parabens. And let me just quickly explain what they are. Sulfates is what adds bubbles to products. So like think of shampoo. I feel like shampoo and conditioners are the only two products that I feel we're very aware of and we would never buy a shampoo that contained sulfates or parabens. Well, guess what? So much of our hair care actually contains those ingredients and we're completely unaware and nobody talks about it. So please be a little bit more picky, not just with your shampoo and conditioner, but look at all of your styling products and make sure they don't contain parabens or sulfates. Parabens are ingredients in a product that are just really bad for mainly our scalp and our like skin absorption. So when you think of a shampoo and conditioner product that you're putting on your hair, especially in the shower, it's getting absorbed by the rest of your skin and not just your hair or scalp. So these can be pretty toxic. They can be hormone disruptors. They're just not great for you. So in today's day and age with the amazing access to information and ingredients that we have, there is absolutely no reason for these to be in any hair product. And lastly, silicones. And I definitely feel this is an ingredient that a lot of us know about. Even if you're not in the hair industry, you know that silicones are bad for the hair and you know to avoid them. Once again, shampoos and conditioners have been hit the hardest with this one. And typically if they don't contain them, they are very proud to let you know that they are free of silicones. And what I've realized in my research over the last couple of months in looking for the absolute best ingredients to go into my hair brand is that unfortunately, silicones are being used everywhere. And let me explain what a silicone is in very simple terms. Silicone completely coats the outside of each hair strand. So it kind of works like a band-aid. So when the hair is damaged, it looks all frazzled and kind of opened up like fish scales that have just all been lifted up. This is bad for two reasons. One, because the innermost part of the hair is exposed when those scales are lifted. But two, the hair tends to look a lot drier and a lot frizzier. And that's typically what people worry about because they see that their hair looks drier than it was before or more frizzy. And they, of course, will look for a product that's gonna minimize this. Silicone does that beautifully, meaning that it completely coats that outer shaft of the hair and it coats it in a, like almost a varnishy way where it'll weigh down those little scale parts of the hair and leaving you with a ton of shine right away. And I'm talking about if this is in your shampoo or conditioner, or even worse, your hair care or styling products that you use when styling your hair. And this is where it gets sneaky. Again, we're very aware to know not to use shampoos and conditioners with silicones, but the problem is that they're still in so, so many of our other, even dare I say, very luxurious hair brands out there. And again, the reason why they work so well is have you ever used a product where instantly your hair felt really shiny, really soft and manageable with the first time use of this product? Most likely it's because there are silicones in it. And so of course, as the consumer, this feels like you did the right thing for your hair. It feels like, oh my gosh, I've healed my hair. All my hair issues are gone. 
Well, the problem with this is because it is a synthetic silicone that's coating each strand of the hair, think of it as this artificial bad ingredient that is coating the hair and with more and more use of it, because obviously when you, you buy that product, you're probably not going to use it just once. What you end up doing is you create this terrible layer in the hair of this residue that just doesn't go away because think of it as like almost like a waxy material on the hair. And so say you actually have a product in your hair care routine that's actually really, really good for your hair and is full of incredible ingredients. Guess what? They're never going to penetrate the hair because you have that seal, that coating of wax on your hair. We've seen this years ago where people would or hairdressers would kind of scrape at the hair with scissors against the hair shaft and all this like dry flaky stuff would come off the hair. And that's typically a hair that's been treated with a ton of silicones and has this crazy amount of buildup. If that is a product that you've been using and you're afraid and you're like, ah, like how do I get rid of this? Best thing to do is use a sulfate, paraben and silicone free shampoo and conditioner to start kind of removing all of that buildup. The best way to, to remove the buildup is to just stop using the product and slowly, very slowly, will overcome this. Using a clarifying shampoo, if your hair type allows for it, is a great way to start. And lastly, start using good quality hair care and styling products. And now these two categories are completely different. So a best example that I can give is think of a hairspray or a good hair oil. You think of the good hair oil as nourishing versus a hairspray, which you know a hairspray is not good for your hair. A hairspray is meant to serve a purpose. It's meant to hold your hair in a specific style. Typically know that those products aren't necessarily good for the hair. They are to get the style that you're looking for. Now in my dream world as a hairdresser would be to make everything that goes on your hair be hair care, meaning that it's good quality ingredients that are actually over time making your hair better. And back to the first ingredient that I talked about, which was alcohols. That is another very sneaky ingredient that's in products. And I learned this very, very long time ago when I was in the first salon working and I would get clients back that had been highlighting their hair and their hair was just getting worse and worse and worse. And they kept attributing it to the highlights. And at the time I wasn't even highlighting it. I was only doing color touch-ups. And I remember thinking, hmm, this looks so much worse than after you got your hair highlighted here. So why is it that your hair continues to get worse? And I did this deep dive and I would ask every client what they were using and the common thread across the board was this Chi Silk hair oil. And it was like the big thing at the time, it smelled amazing and everyone would say, oh, I put it on and my hair is instantly frizz free. And then I thought, could that be the culprit? Could that be making everyone's hair drier? And it's like, absolutely not. It's an oil, how can it make the hair drier? Well, later it came out that it contained a ton of alcohols. Um, I did a ton of research and unfortunately it did. And I myself was also using the product. I stopped using the product for about 30 days and my hair improved so much. And I couldn't believe that a product that literally was formulated and marketed as something that was going to help your hair was actually making it worse. And since then I've been absolutely obsessed with this. And I don't know why it's taken me 15 years to finally start my own hair brand, but uh, I, I really don't like to put out content that is negative or that is focusing on a negative, but I feel like I'm just so passionate about this and I feel like I've done so much research and I thought it was definitely time for me to simplify it in a video and help you make the best decisions for you and your hair. So I hope this video hasn't been too boring, too unsexy, but I hope you've taken some information and you start making better decisions for your hair care.
So, so that I don't leave you on just a negative note and afraid to use anything on the hair, I of course wanna leave you with some tips and what you can do to avoid falling into these awful traps of terrible ingredients. So one of the first things that you can do, and this is absolutely the wrong thing that I should be saying when I'm looking to start a brand, but if you, everything you're trying and your hair just seems like it's getting worse and drier and more unhealthy, I would just say, I would just say eliminate all the products you're putting on your hair after you're out of the shower. Stick to a good shampoo and conditioner for 30 days and see where your hair is after that time. It's so much easier to attribute our hair damage to our coloring and all our salon processing, but you are doing so much more care to your hair on a daily basis that if you're using the wrong ingredients, you could so much more be damaging your hair in those 30, 60 days in between salon appointments than your salon appointment alone. And if you just want a simplified way to just clean up your hair routine, avoid alcohols and avoid anything with silicones. Now the tricky part here is in the ingredients that often have their scientific name, which is a lot harder to, to spot, especially if you're not in the industry. So I'm just going to say silicone as the third ingredient, but anything with like dimethicone, cone kind of word at the end, those are typical synthetic silicone ingredients. And of course, alcohol, because it's extremely drying on the hair. Now, in creating my own line, I understand the place of alcohols and why in some products they are necessary. Again, think of a, ha a hairspray. In order for it to freeze the hair in that specific way, it needs to be essentially really drying so that it freezes in that shape. So a hairspray is very difficult to make it actually good for the hair. I just want you to be better informed and I want you to, in 2023 and going forward, to be a little more educated on hair products. I feel like makeup has, has gone in a great direction in terms of becoming cleaner um, and I feel like with hair products we're kind of only starting and I feel like a part of this issue is the people that are informed and have this information it's easier to not share the information because it's easier to continue putting these products or these ingredients into products um, because it cuts a lot of corners. And when I sought out to create my own line, the, the one thing that, I mean, I could have put my name on like white label products a million years ago. I knew that if I was ever going to do this, it really had to be, I'm not going to, you know, reinvent the wheel. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to try and revolutionize hair products. But one thing that I want to do is I want to have products for you that are A, going to be simple, simple to use, and B, a simple routine where you don't need 15 products to have a great hair, or not even five. And I can promise you that they are going to be as good and clean for the environment as they are going to be for your hair. And a big part of me where I have was always kind of stuck and didn't want to move forward, where didn't want to move forward with creating a brand was, can I really create something that's better than what's already out there? And the more research I did, the more I realized I need to do this because unfortunately there's so much crap out there. And I will leave you with this bit of positivity. There are also some lines that I literally I will do the a week deep dive into all their products and their ingredients and they're doing absolutely amazing and clean and you know down to the fragrance and the preservatives they're just clean and good for you. So there are incredible incredible lines out there and um, that I'm really proud to have been using. And along with this research, of course, I've looked at skincare and one of the cleanest lines that we have, I think right now, is actually Summer Fridays. I know it's a skincare, but I just need to give a major prop. So anyway, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're inspired to clean up your hair routine and get on with healthier, better hair. I'll see you in the next one.